Ada. Um, we work for NYU Langone Health and we work in the food service department in Tisch Hospital. Today I'm going to talk to him about his leadership experience here. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, so I'm uh, Nicholas and um, I started out with the Air Force as a fighter jet mechanic and training new recruits in the Air Force. Uh, to help get them acclimated to uh, dramatic culture change. And since then, I have gone on to get my bachelor's degree in nutrition and dietetics. And uh, I've worked as a line cook, a chef at a small place, and since then, a manager here at NYU Langone Health for the past almost six years now. Yeah, um, so, so far, what's going well in your role? Um, I would say that in my time here, I've been able to inspire quite a bit of confidence in my uh, coworkers and my subordinates or Your employees. Yeah. Um, in that, uh, they do respect me to some extent as a leader, and also trust me that I will make the right decisions, uh, which is very important uh, in a leadership role. That your team believes in you to some extent. And on the flip side of that, what challenges are you facing? Uh, one of the greatest challenges uh, in any situation, I find, is dealing with managers who are above you or from other departments or even sometimes other members of your own management team, if you have a management team, um, in relation to managing your staff because you have the way that you want to manage them, but you also have to kind of meet people in the middle with their management styles, which sometimes can clash. So one of the biggest challenges we face here at NYU Langone Health is maybe I'd like to be uh, managing a certain way, like more strict or more leniently, and another manager would like it to be done a different way, and you have to find that middle ground uh, while still keeping a presence as a management team with your staff. That's great. Um, what would your greatest weakness be? Uh, my greatest weakness as a manager, I think, is that I always like to give people a second chance or third chance or fourth chance. I'd like to believe that everyone can improve, um, which sometimes you need to be a little bit more strict with your staff and just accept that some people have areas they have difficulty in and you need to really kind of nail down on those people. I don't think that's such a weakness, but okay. <laughs> what is your greatest strength? Well, I think it's that I always give people a second chance or third <laughs> chance or fourth chance, and people uh, do respond well to that. That even if there's someone who has gotten into trouble or gotten into a bad situation, they know that they're never going to be viewed as a bad employee as long as they work for me because I'm always willing to believe that people can improve uh, for the best. And what values are most important to you as a leader? Uh, as a leader, I would say uh, being trustworthy, always following up on the little things, things that don't seem important. You know, if a staff member is asking about uh, something like a day off in the future um, or someone that works for you, maybe it seems like it's not an important thing and you have all of these big important tasks to do, but maybe that's a big deal to them. So being able to follow up on all of the small things with your team, I think is a hugely important uh, leadership quality. Can you define leadership? Um, I would say leadership is being sort of the brains of the operation. Um, you know, your job isn't to do the job per se. Um, if you're a chef, your job is not to cook, your job is to make sure that the cooks are doing their job properly. If you're a sergeant in the military, your job is not to do the, you know, mechanic work. Your job is to make sure it's being done properly by your team. Uh, your job is to inspire them and also follow up on them to make sure that things are going correctly and uh, your staff is always, you know, progressing in their own careers. Okay, and can you tell me about a time when you demonstrated leadership skills? Uh, never demonstrated leadership skills in my life. Yes, you no, have all know, the I time. Um, I would say back, uh, there was a time when the hospital actually caught on fire. Uh, the entire hospital uh, it was, you know, billows of smoke coming down. And we had to get the staff uh, out of the building. There was a evacuation point as you have in any situation. And um, I was able to help assist with getting people out. And rather than just going out myself, I stayed in the building to make sure everyone else got out. And then once 
the fire was all clear, we were allowed to come back in, I was able to very quickly get the operation back up and running. So in this case, it's a cafeteria, um, and I was able to get everyone in place, make sure we had enough stuff to go, and then you know just get the doors back open and say, guys, here we go. Which I think that was a, that was a major situation where people were really frazzled. So being able to kind of wrangle the situation in and take control of it was uh, was pretty good. So okay, let's move on. So um, who was your favorite leader, and why? My favorite leader is uh, my old trainer in the Air Force, Ralph. Because when you first get into any type of, and when you go into any job role, but specifically the military, it's a massive culture transition, and you're you know everything's turned upside down. It's it's very strict. It's very um, aggressive work schedules. Um, and Ralph was this very laid back guy from Philly who was just like very, I would say almost unprofessional in his approach. But it was fantastic for us because it was someone you felt like this isn't just someone in the military who's like a sergeant. This is like another guy who really cares about you. And, you know, he would really care more about your progression as uh, a young person than about the, you know, Air Force's major mission, which is can be viewed if you're um, on one side of the coin as his boss is as a bad thing. But on the other side of the coin, you really felt like this guy really cares about you. And if someone from, you know, a, a higher level of leadership is coming after you, he would have your back. And so therefore we worked harder for him. Um, so how can a leader fail? Can you give an example? I think a leader fails when the staff loses confidence for you or when your team loses confidence in you um, for one reason or another. And I think that once you've lost the confidence of your team, it's extremely hard to get it back. It takes a lot more effort to regain lost confidence than it does to build like an initial confidence. So in a situation where they feel like if they go to you, you're not going to get anything done for them or you're going to give them wrong information and they're going to end up doing the wrong thing or getting themselves into more trouble by doing what you say, I think at that point you failed as a leader. And how do you measure success for you as a leader? Uh, my success is measured by my team's success in oftentimes in small ways. It's not necessarily is the operation running perfectly, but are my staff members, do I feel like they're progressing to the best of their ability? Uh, do I feel like they're engaged in their work? Do I feel like they're not upset to come to work? Uh, nobody wants to go to work, but you should, you know, you should feel like okay coming to work. When you walk in the door and people put a smile on their face, I feel like you're succeeding at that point. Yeah. Is how do you monitor the performance of the people you have led? So uh, a number of ways. Um, one way to do it is to trust your more senior members of your team to give you feedback on your staff members. Um, if you're managing a large operation, you can't always be everywhere at all times. So if you have people who work on, let's say, shifts that you aren't on or in different locations that you're not in, you have to have your key people who you know will give you good feedback. So it's a lot of learning who are the people to trust and then also inspiring in them the confidence that they can tell you actual feedback uh, without worrying that it's going to seem like you know, they're trying to bring someone else down. What do you do to motivate your team currently? Currently, uh, I try to motivate my team by letting them know that, um, you know, if the situation, like we're oftentimes in situations where we're short-staffed or where things are less than ideal, um, I try to motivate them by just letting them know that I'm right there with them, and which I think is, you know, it, it inspires people to work a little harder if they say, you know, well, my boss is doing that, yeah. so holy crap, I need to step my game up. Agreed. What are the team's strengths and weaknesses? Well, weaknesses, uh, quite a few. No, you do, especially when you're in a leadership role in any capacity, you tend to focus more on weaknesses than strengths. It's just, it, you know, it is your job is to focus on the weaknesses so you can improve them, but it is important to know that there are strengths. There's a, a snicker there because we always think about the weaknesses on our team, but... You know, there, there are strengths. We do have a team uh, that's very diverse, and they really do get along well with different members of the staff. So the staff, like 60-something, 80 people, whatever, whatever 80, it is these yeah. days, yeah, it fluctuates. Um, and there's members on the staff that aren't going to work well for someone with my leadership style. 
but there are other members of the team who have a leadership style that they do work well with. Um, so having a diverse range of different types of leaders is actually very helpful because you can make sure that there's someone on the team that every employee can look to and relate to. And if you're all on the same page as managers, you can use that to get them all to do the same job that you want them to. Uh, weaknesses? Um, yeah, no, no weaknesses. Everything's great. We're doing good. <laughs> the weaknesses uh, is, on the flip side of that, being on the same page. Um, you know, there's different styles of management, as I had said before. And you, it's good that one manager on the team can get these five people really motivated to work, whereas maybe I can get these five people really motivated to work, but we need to make sure that we are getting them to work for the same goal. Um, so it's a weakness on the team, and it does often happen if you have a very diverse uh, management staff in terms of backgrounds and uh, cultures, is that uh, they may not always be on the same page as you as the goal. That's where you need like a you know, a person above you to keep you guys all on the same page. Are you able to collaborate with others and accept new ideas? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I Definitely. Um, I love new ideas from people, especially when I get new staff members in from other locations. I always like to hear about how things were done in their last position, and maybe there's some ways to improve. Um, the number one thing that I try to focus on in this role is making the job a more efficient, um, or making the processes of the job more efficient. Um, I don't like wasting time. I don't like doing labor for no reason. Anytime something is done in an inefficient way and someone says, well, we've always done it that way, that's my least favorite thing to hear. Because if there's a better way to do it, why wouldn't you do it the better way? So yeah, I love getting feedback from people and saying, you know, hey, here's what we did at this place. And saying, all right, well, maybe that won't work here, but we can take some parts of that and put them into our processes and then improve our processes. What? are the most important values you demonstrate as a leader? Um, I think compassion would be the most important value that I demonstrate as a leader. It's, it's not saying that you care, it's caring about, you know, the little things your employees tell you. It's not just listening to people, it's actually taking in what they're saying and remembering it. And, you know, someone coming to you and saying, oh, my mother's sick or whatever, and then, you know, two weeks later, you saying, hey, how's your mother doing? And they remember that. They, they care about that kind of thing. And what is the most difficult part of being a leader? Uh, caring every day and not phoning it in, I think, is very difficult because, the, you know, you have your own personal life going on and maybe, you know, you have your family problems or your dog is sick or whatever the case is, but you have to put that away when you get in the door and oftentimes when you leave you still have to keep that away because when you leave you're still the leader and people will still reach out to you and call you and expect you to be that leader even though you're kind of trying to be in your own personal space. And lastly, what kind of criticism do you most get? Uh, the very recently, especially the, the most common criticism I get seems to be uh, it's not your fault Nick uh, because I always <laughs> I always take everything on and say, oh, how could I have done that better? Whereas I get a lot of people on my team saying, eh, it's not your fault, Nick. <laughs> so this is a very common criticism these days is, you know, relax. Uh, I mean, after so long of working so hard, I think. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, you tend as a leader, as a manager of any sort, to take yourself very seriously. And you don't always need to take yourself quite so seriously because not everything is the end of the world. Which I think applies to quite a few different management roles. You know, yeah. it's, it's not always that big of a deal. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. That's the end of the interview. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you.